So we've had another bout of ick. This happened to be in the fancy cylinder tank. I think it started out as a result of me medicating for eye flukes on the big angels, and that in turn somehow stressed out some of the other fish, which it then began to spread throughout the tank. As you've seen before, uh, I don't have a test kit. I'm using a visual cue as to when I've reached a therapeutic level. And by adding in half dose increments, it's not as uh, hard on the fish, and you can slowly raise that level up. Yeah, it would behoove me to have a test kit, but all of a sudden I seem to have these ick problems all within a row, and I don't have that kit or can't find my old one. Anyhow, that's not the story here today. We recovered from the ick. The ick is entirely gone in the tank. Unfortunately, the medication process has had a negative effect, somehow biologically. I don't think it's affected the bacteria. I think what it did affect was the micro life, the various sponge growth that was occurring in the tank, which is now in the process of dying and releasing its waste into the system, of which the biological filters attempting to deal with it. Unfortunately, I've got an elevated level of ammonia. The fish don't seem to be stressed, or let me rephrase that, they seem to have become a little less stressed over the last few days, but again, I still have an elevated level of ammonia. At this point, there's not a whole lot of options, and I think my first choice is to go in there and do a partial water change to try to delete that level. So come along with me as we do that 100 gallon water change in the fancy cylinder tank. So it sometimes seems like we're <clears throat> in an Indiana Jones movie, meaning every time I do one thing to try to resolve a problem in the aquarium, I end up with another problem. In this particular situation, I originally started out treating for eye flukes on the big angels. Then I ended up with an ick problem. Now I end up with an ammonia problem. Being an aquarium service guy, you just got to be able to jump to about everything. So as I mentioned, being a fish guy, you kind of got to know a lot about everything and it's not always the case and I'll admit I've been doing it long enough that I've kind of developed my own routines but um, never really been formally trained and there's never really been any good um, uh, speakers or presentations on medications or nutrition. But you can see the water in the cylinder tank is a little on the hazy side. Um, there are detectable levels of ammonia, but so far the fish do not seem to be uh, negatively impacted by it. So I think what I need to do first is um, test the water once again and then start draining out a hundred gallons so I can replace it with a hundred gallons of new. The test kit is a standard API master test kit. It's fairly accurate and quite affordable. It consists of various glass vials, an assortment of chemical reagents, and instructions on how to dispense those various chemicals that ultimately will show us in graphic color the levels that we're testing for. Previously, this tank has shown a high level of ammonia, and yet curiously, no nitrite, which has me a bit concerned, as I would expect with such a high level of ammonia that at any time it would be converted, biologically speaking, into nitrite. And once again, I'd move into that Indiana Jones problem. I use Cupermine, a copper-based medication put out by Seachem. We've reached out to them to offer some insight, but have not heard back from them as of yet. Since the test requires a few minutes to achieve its results, I can take this time to prepare for the water change. Access into the top of the cylinder tank is through panels that are held in place by Velcro. The openings are about 12 inches tall and allow me to get my arm and shoulder over the edge of the tank. So you can see here there's a 
definitely a little bit of ammonia in the water. I would say pushing 2.0 parts per million of ammonia. Interesting enough, there has been zero nitrite in the system at all. And so your question is, what is causing the ammonia problem? And what am I going to do to solve it? To solve it? Well, what caused it is most likely the uh, copper medication had some kind of a negative effect on the life within the tank. I don't think it affected the biological filter. I think what it did was it definitely affected the amount of micro life in the system. And what I mean by micro life, sponge growth and all that fine little invertebrate life that uh, develops over time in systems that are allowed to um, grow naturally or don't have any uh, thing in there killing off the microlife, such as medication. So we've got the garden hose here. What we're going to do is take out 100 gallons of water and replenish it with 100 gallons that I brought in the van. Hi there, my name's Jim Stein, and you know me as the LA Fish Guy. Well, I also wear a couple of other hats. One of them is the jellyfish tank called the Jelly Aquarium, and the third is myfishtank.com. I offer an entire line of acrylic aquariums ranging from rectangular to hexagon, flatback hex, as well as the custom curve front aquariums. There's also an entire line of stands and canopies ranging from MDF to pine to oak with a variety of different finishes available. And the website is even smart enough that you can calculate what the freight and crate charges to your location will be. That's myfishtank.com. Reef Hobbyist Magazine believes that our hobby, our fellow hobbyists, and the animals in our care are best served by the free distribution of quality information. Reef Hobbyist Magazine provides hobbyists with critical husbandry information with an emphasis on marine ornamental breeding efforts. Reef Hobbyist Magazine is available for free in local fish stores across the country, or you can subscribe at www.reefhobbyistmagazine.com. So your question is, a 100-gallon water change is going to resolve that ammonia spike in the system? The answer is no, it's not. Your second question is, why am I not putting something in there to deal with that ammonia, such as a, a Dr. Bob's um, uh, elixir that might um, convert ammonia much quicker, or maybe some uh, Bacter minus or something like that? Well, so the answer to your question is, I'd be afraid of putting anything that would improve the biological's ability because at the moment I only have to deal with the ammonia and as you saw it's not converting it to nitrite and so I believe that the situation is simply the results of not a decrease in biological filtration but just an increase in the amount of waste in the system. Again, keep in mind, all that micro life got killed off, and now we're dealing with the results of it by increasing the biological filter's capability. I think all we're gonna do is just create a bigger problem for ourselves, that being not only just an ammonia spike in the system, but now it'll end up creating a nitrite spike in the system. And once again, I come back to my comment about the Indiana Jones movie. It seems like you just jump from one problem to another problem, and I'm really trying to avoid that. In other words, just contain it to one or the least number of problems as possible. Normally, I would attach the garden hose to my custom-made siphon vacuum. 
I've done this every four weeks for the last seven years. It's how I clean the gravel at the bottom of a tank. And this tank is 66 inches deep. My goal today is to minimize my disturbance in the tank, especially a disruption in the biological aspects of the tank. So today, I'm just gonna draw out 100 gallons of water by using a sump pump. This should make it quick, biologically painless, and help lower that ammonia level that I'm detecting in the tank. So the water change portion should be fairly easy. We've done this every four weeks for the last uh, seven years. I just need to uh, do it a little bit sooner this particular time. That water has run out into a uh, floor drain here in the yard, which uh, sends it out to the sewer. So there'll be 100 gallons of ammonia-laden water going down the drain. And we'll uh, in turn put 100 gallons of clean water back in the tank. And how do we know what 100 gallons is? Well, as I mentioned, I've done this a number of times, so there's a little mark on the tank that I can put a piece of tape on that I know where 100 gallons is. So be sure to come on back for part two to see if and how much a 100 gallon water change has. And until then, keep moving forward. <laughs>